All right, hello, this is the, the key, the answer key for the uh, 6.1 to 6.3 quiz on AP Classroom. All right, so there's only six questions here. So the first one, uh, for a classroom demonstration, a chemistry teacher puts samples of two different pure solid powders in a beaker. The teacher places the beaker on a small wooden board with a wet surface, then stirs the contents of the beaker. After a short time, the student observes that the bottom of the beaker is frozen to the wood surface. The teacher asks the students to make a claim about the observation and to justify their claims. Which of the following is the best claim and justification based on the student's observations? Okay, so with the, the water freezing, that means that <clears throat> that energy is being absorbed from it uh, into the reaction that's taking place in the beaker. So we know that's an endothermic reaction that's happening in the beaker. So that eliminates A and B. Um, but the letter C says it's an endothermic physical change occurring because the freezing of water is an endothermic process. That, that's not true. The freezing of water is an exothermic process where it's going to give off energy. Um, the endothermic process is taking place in the beaker that's pulling heat energy from the water to cause it to freeze. So letter D is the correct answer. It says an endothermic chemical change occurred because the temperature of the beaker and the water on the board decreased as heat was absorbed by the reaction, and the reaction was taking place in the beaker. All right, question number two. So which of the following phase changes involves a transfer of heat from the surroundings to the system? So we want to pick a, a phase change where we're moving to a higher energy state. So we're going from a lower energy state to a higher energy state. So the only one that fits that is letter D. Uh, the rest of these are moving to lower energy states. This is the only one that's moving to a higher energy state. We're going from a liquid to a gas. <clears throat> Question three. All right, so this one is about uh, we're, we're spraying water on some cherry blossoms, which kind of, yeah, cherry trees. So we want to try to keep the, the cherry blossoms from freezing, so farmers will spray water on them. Now the way this works is that the freezing of water is an exothermic process. So that means when the water freezes, it's going to give off some of its heat energy to the surroundings. Well, if you spray water on those cherry blossoms, the water will freeze, give heat energy to those blossoms, and it keeps those blossoms at or above negative 2 degrees Celsius. So letter D is the correct answer. <clears throat> Question number four. All right, so we have this little reaction right here with this uh, energy diagram. So the question is, which of the following best describes the flow of heat when one mole of XY2 decomposes? All right, so we're not looking at the activation energy here. So um, this point right here where it looks like it's a catalyst, catalyzed reaction, and this point right here where you have the uncatalyzed activation energy, all we're looking at is the difference between reactants and products. And that's 50 kilojoules per mole. And this is an endothermic process because the, the products have more potential energy than the reactants. So that 50 kilojoules per mole is gonna be absorbed from the surroundings, right? So um, one mole is decomposing. So if it's 50 kilojoules per mole, that means 50 kilojoules will be absorbed in the reaction. So we know the amount is 50 kilojoules. Now we just have to make sure we, we understand the direction of heat flow. It's going to go, the heat, since it's endothermic, the heat energy is going to go from the surroundings into the system. So the one that describes that is letter B. 50 kilojoules of heat is transformed from the surroundings. All right, so you just have to pay attention to the terminology and the answers. Okay, uh, number five. All right, so we have a piece of iron at 25, and we have water at 75. So the prediction is that uh, when thermal equilibrium is reached, the iron atoms, being more massive than the water molecules, will have a higher average kinetic energy than the water molecules. All right, so this is incorrect. Now we have to explain why. So in, in letter A, it says the less massive water molecules will have a higher average kinetic energy. Well, that's not true. When we get to... Uh, thermal equilibrium, both substances will have the same average kinetic energy and the same temperature. All right. Letter B, 
is wrong because it says that at iron atoms and water molecules would um, occlusions between those would cease while the particles are still moving at thermal equilibrium it's just we don't have any temperature change or any heat flow but the particles are still moving and colliding All right so that's why that one's wrong letter c it says that the movement of the atoms and the water molecules would cease well that's not true the particles are still moving they just have the same average kinetic energy and the same temperature so the answer is letter d the average kinetic energy and it's key that's that average they're not all they don't all have the same kinetic energy but on average the iron atoms cannot be greater than that of water molecules because at thermal equilibrium those two things must be the same the average kinetic energy and the temperature of both must be the same okay number six all right so we have a maxwell boltzmann distribution uh graph one is showing a higher temperature it says uh I'm sorry, lower temperature, that's 300 Kelvin. Graph two is showing a higher temperature. So higher temperatures have wider distribution. So we're saying this one's at 600 Kelvin. All right, so on, on this one, the student predicts that if the samples are combined in an insulated container and thermal equilibrium is attained, then the most probable particle energy will be in between be between the most probable energy shown in graph one and the most probable energy shown in graph two. So when we put those two samples together, those two samples of gas together, um, after they mix and reach thermal equilibrium, their distributions will be somewhere in between these two. All right, so we have to say, well, why is, why is that correct? Well, the correct answer is D. But in letter A, uh, the reason that this is wrong, it says the lowest energy particles will decrease and the highest energy particles increase. That's the opposite of what's going to happen. They're going to meet in the middle. All right. In letter B, uh, the problem with this one, uh, let's see, when the samples are combined, the gas particles will collide with the gas particles until every particle in the mixture has the same speed. And here's the problem right here, the same speed. All the particles do not have the same speed. All right. So there's a distribution of the energies of those particles. There's a distribution of the speeds. So at every temperature, you'll have some particles that are moving faster, some that are moving slower. But on average, at higher temperatures, they are the particles are moving faster. So that's the problem there. Okay. Letter C. Uh, the problem with this one. Um, oh, here it's, it's, it's also has same kinetic energy. Same issue as letter B. They don't have the same kinetic energy. There's a distribution of the kinetic energies. All right. So, and then letter D, this is correct. The net effect being that the energy will be transferred from the more energetic particles to the less energetic particles until a new distribution is achieved at a temperature between 300 and 600. So that's what happens. The higher energy particles hit the lower energy particles and that, that energy is distributed until you get something in between the high temperature and the low temperature. So letter D is the correct answer there. All right, and that's it for that quiz. Have a good day.